welcome to our YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to load on a backhoe. how I got this machine up here running. This is a 1981 Ford backhoe and it barely started. It had so many issues with the connectors. So what I did was I bought this. This is a NOCO Boost 4250 or 4,250 amp uh, booster pack. Instead of having jump start cables, uh, this is what you need to get. You need to get this right here if you're going with the heavy machinery. This will help you boost uh, semi trucks, construction equipment, and anything below cars, anything you need. I tried to use my jumper cables hooked to my truck, wasn't enough power. This right here is what you need 4,250 amp. It's about $369 on Amazon and uh, 1981. And this thing got running like brand new. One thing I like to do, I like to lay all my binders, my chains out. So that way I know I have enough binders and chains. You don't have to do it this way, but this is the way that I like to do it. That way I know exactly that I have enough and that I'm not running short. So I'm gonna go ahead and start, show you guys how I would chain this down. I'm gonna show you what I like to do is hook it as close as I can to the link that's closest to here that's not twisted. So basically I could go up one, but look at that. It's not really gonna sit in there. And I could go with this one, but it's gonna be twisted. So that's my next one. I make sure my chains are straight down and I connect to the one that's straight down. If I start connecting to this one, it's gonna get twisted and I'm gonna have to do more cranks. Another thing that I like to do is I go ahead and I just start looping all my chains before I start cranking. This is something I like to do. You don't have to do it this way, but since I've already started this way, I don't like changing things up. So I go ahead, I connect my chain, 
and then I'm gonna go to the other side and connect the rest. All right, I'll show them. One thing you gotta be wary of is you got hydraulics right here and the tires are and uh, you don't want to wrap around this. You wanna wrap around the solid frame. You don't wanna wrap around the axle. You're gonna bend it up. You don't wanna wrap around any hydraulics, no hoses, you gotta watch for wiring too. The only thing you wanna wrap around is a steel frame. So, like I have it here, you wanna show them over here. I got it wrapped around the frame only. Right there, yep. So that's how you want it. And then what you're gonna do when you do the binders, we'll get to that in a minute, you're just gonna pull it this direction. So basically, you're gonna be pulling the machinery this way and that way. I'll show you in a second. If it's a little confusing, I'll explain it later. So with this one, if you do two binders, it doesn't require that many. So what I like to do is I'm gonna pull it this direction here. If I start pulling it that direction, if I start doing this way, it's gonna start pulling the claw forward. Now, these hydraulics already have uh, weight being pushed against them right now. So I'm gonna pull against the weight this direction. So what I like to do is I'll put it in this pocket here where I have my round, the round piece of metal and I come back through the other round piece of metal and I connect it to itself. And I connect it to itself like that. Make sure, just like every chain you have connected to the machinery, that the chain's not twisted. If you get twisted, as you start cranking, you're gonna have to crank a whole lot more and you might run out of crank. So you gotta make sure that every chain it's not twisted too bad. In this one, you can't really hear too good, so I decided to do a voiceover. Uh, basically, what I was saying was you grab the chain, and what you want to do is run it across the top of the bucket. And what you need to do first is try to find the middle of the chain, so that way it's even on both sides. So this one, you can tell I'm trying to find the middle. So when I put it in the back... I run it through the loops on both sides. And then I'll put it in the front and then I'll start pulling back towards the machinery, which you'll see me do here in a second. The other side of the chain, because sometimes you can't fit it through some of the small pockets on different machinery you run through. So if I had a choice, I got a hook on this side. I like to hook it on this side and run my binder side, the driver's side. That way, that way I can see if the binder is falling down, getting loose. If I see the binder's loose, then I know the chain's loose. So I like to run it this way here. I'm gonna come back with it, all right? In this one, you'll notice that I run the chain through the two round pockets. Here, I'll show you here in a second. So I run it from the top down through, and I don't run it through the square pockets. I run it through the round ones, okay. Now I got too much slack, so I have to pull it out and try to hook it to, oh, I dropped it. Try to hook it to itself. There we go. And then I'll pull the excess slack over to the other side and I'll do the exact same thing that I did here. And on this part, I take the binder, I hook it to the square pocket and then directly to the chain. Once I finish cranking, I just take the excess part of the chain and I just wrap it around the trailer. Yeah, 
And this one, the only option I have is to hook it back to the same square pocket on the other side. And I hook that to the chain. Once I do that, I start cranking. And that is how we chain down a backhoe and how we load on 